Good morning all. I thought I'd play with my new Ameter today. This is the one I built recently uh, with an OLED, an Arduino Pro Mini and an INA219 current sensor sandwiched together, powered by a 9 volt battery. And I've wired it to this 18650 battery holder. I've commoned these three terminals on the left hand side there. And I've wired uh, these two holders, the top two, through the current sensor. So if I put two cells into this holder, then we can see the current flowing between the two cells. Now, of course, the current on the ammeter is currently reading uh, zero. In fact, it's reading about point something milliamps. This is in milliamps. It does actually flick to zero every now and again. So it's reasonably well nulled out. I don't know whether there's a software null in this chip. It doesn't really matter because that's very close to zero. Now I've got two um, battery chargers. This one's actually doing a discharge uh, of this cell. So I'm going to take this right down to whatever this discharges to, which I think is 2.85 volts from what I can tell. And I've got another battery charger uh, here. This is the Litocala Engineer 300. And this one is charging uh, this cell. It's just got up to 4.1 volts. So when this gets to 4.2 volts and the current comes down and then this thing completes. This will be a completely charged cell and this will be a completely discharged cell and I'm going to put them in parallel. Now if you're thinking that's a really stupid thing to do to put two uh, 18650s in parallel, one fully discharged and one fully charged, well yes under normal circumstances it would be a bit daft but these, uh, well they're marked as Ultrafire, these cells that I got off eBay some time ago have a very high internal resistance. It's not really going to uh, cause major problems. Let's just have a look at this one. The internal resistance is showing up as 290 milliohms. Uh, this one I think also indicates internal resistance. Whoops. Uh, that one is 125 milliohms. Now these internal resistance measurements are all a bit suspect. Uh, if I swap these over they'd probably read um, the same as they're reading now. So there's something in the order of 200 milliohms uh, for these cells. Now also bear in mind that we've got a 100 milliohm uh, current sense resistor in the ammeter itself. So we've got it in the order of about 500 milliohms. Uh, what's that? Half an ohm between these two cells, including their internal resistance. So I can't see anything majorly bad happening. Now, just a little bit about these battery chargers. Um, this one is the Opus BTC100, and I quite like using this for discharging because it will discharge without any external power supply. You can use, I think, USB there or 12 volts uh, there. Yeah, 12 volt input, 5 volt input. But this will discharge an 18650 using the power of the 18650 itself to power the charger so it's quite nice for discharging. This one of course I'm charging uh, it says 4.2 volts. What this doesn't tell you is the charge current. It tells you the nominal charge current 500 uh, milliamps. It doesn't tell you what the actual charge current is because now that we've hit 4.2 volts uh, the charge current will have dropped down below 500 but it doesn't show you that. It also only shows you voltage to one decimal place. This one actually shows it to three decimal places so this is a really neat charger. But uh, this one's quite handy, it's got a 12 volt input, so I'm just charging uh, that one with the Litocala Engineer LII300. Right, the one that's discharging is close to its minimum. I think it uh, stops discharging at 2.85, so it's nearly there. This one says it's still charging, but it hasn't terminated yet. Uh, 2.8, yes, now it's going back up. So this one has stopped discharging at half an amp. So what I'm going to do is just press and hold that to re-establish a discharge and then I'll just ease the current down a bit. Uh, let's do it at 300 milliamps discharge. So in other words, I'm doing another discharge. Let's wait till it draws 300 milliamps and then take a look at the voltage. 3.1, 3.0, so that's shooting down pretty fast. It's not going to last long at 300 milliamps. Uh, still waiting for this one to say full. 
Right, a final discharge of this cell at just 100 milliamps, so it's holding on a little bit uh, at that very low current, but that will eventually drop down to about 2.85 volts. And then I can't discharge this at any lower current, so that, as far as I'm concerned, is this cell fully discharged. This one still hasn't said full yet, so I'm still waiting for that one to uh, indicate that it's fully charged. Right, the discharge cell is now fully discharged. I can't uh, discharge this anymore. It drops down to 2.85 volts too quickly. Uh, so I'm going to put it in the bottom uh, holder here. That's on the V in minus side, so that we should get a positive reading when I put the fully charged cell in. That's still not done. So let's put that in. I have actually got my plus symbol on this side and minus on this side, because I was kind of thinking of measuring current in the negative end, but that's fairly irrelevant because uh, this thing is pretty much uh, symmetrical either way. So I'm going to put this in positive side to the right. It's a very tight fit. And then when this one is fully charged, that's going in there, effectively in parallel through this uh, 0.1 ohm resistor. And we'll see how much current we get flowing between the two cells. Right, the little color is saying full. Now it was charging at 500 milliamps, so um, it should have dropped that to about 50 milliamps before saying uh, that the cell was full, holding that 4.2 volts. So as far as I'm concerned, this is now full and it's going in parallel with the empty one. Right, here we go. Uh, how much current will be drawn? Let's find out about an amp. It was just over an amp. That looks like it's crashing a bit. I think maybe this battery is flat, which is a bit of a shame, but it's hanging on in there. And the current's dropping. 700 milliamps. Yes, that's a real shame. That red LED is quite dim, so I think the battery in there, which is a cheap, nasty one, is a bit low. It doesn't matter too much because it's still giving us a reading. So that one amp has dropped fairly quickly down to now half an amp. And bear in mind that this that's jammed up, so I'm going to have to put a new battery in there. Yes, that would happen, wouldn't it, just at the moment of interest. But um, after another minute or so, this has dropped to about 350 milliamps. So the current is being redistributed well, the energy, I suppose, from the uh, charged cell, which is this top one, through the current sense resistor into the discharge cell, and they will balance out. Now, their voltages, theoretically, are the same, uh, minus, of course, the voltage that's sitting across this current sense resistor. So we're drawing still, uh, or current of 320 milliamps is being transferred between the two cells, and that will just continue to drop with a sort of exponential decay type curve. So this could sit there with current flowing between the two cells for quite a while. Now, if you're thinking that uh, I should have put an oscilloscope on here, for example, to check the, the peak current in that first few milliseconds when I connected these two batteries together, well, that initial small time doesn't really matter because this resistor has some thermal mass. So even if several tens of amps were flowing, but just for a few milliseconds. doesn't really matter, that will have warmed up a bit. Um, but that current dropped so quickly, certainly within the time that I was able to see it, in other words, the refresh time of this display, which is 200 milliseconds, that it came within the uh, safe operating region of this current sense resistor, which uh, I think this unit is designed to um, detect about three amps. So within the first few milliseconds, it was well below that figure. It was at one amp. I think the first figure we saw was one point something amps, and then it dropped very quickly below one amp. So certainly no um, amount of current that's likely to damage any of the components here, the holder, these wires, that current sense resistor. So it dropped to safe uh, into a safe region well within any uh, time that there might have been a problem. Right, this has been sitting here on my bench for about 10 minutes now, and there's still 200 milliamps flowing from the charge cell to the discharge cell. Of course, they're both sort of balancing out now. There's probably a fair way still to go in terms of uh, energy capacity in the two cells. 
But uh, certainly this proves that if you've got these rather poor quality high internal resistance cells, yes you can fully discharge one and fully charge the other, put them in parallel and nothing really bad happens. Now that may not be the case if you take uh, high quality very low internal resistance cells because if you put those in parallel a very large initial current will flow. Not going to try that experiment because it's a bit stupid. But uh, I think this is going to be a very useful uh, little ammeter. I'm going to make some more of these. I've ordered some more OLEDs and current sensors. I've got more of these uh, Arduino Pro Minis, these ones with the two rows of pins up one end, which lends itself quite well to uh, I squared C flowing between the three boards. Now I just kind of wanted to dig these cells out for a moment because they're a bit tricky to get out. Uh, I wanted to just swap them round so that we can see the negative uh, current readings. It is quite hard to get these out. So let's put this one, which is the more charged one, there. And the more discharged one I'll put there. And now we've got our 200 milliamps flow, but of course it's in the other direction and shows it's indicating that with a minus sign. Now, when I've got two of these ammeters, I can put one in series with each of the cells, but the cells being in parallel, and then watch the difference in current between dissimilar capacity cells. So for example, I've got one here, which is about 1500 milliamp hours. And if I put that in parallel with whatever's in this pound shot power bank, which is definitely gonna be less than 1500 milliamp hours, put those in parallel, uh, we can see the individual currents flowing into the two cells when I charge them as a parallel pair and discharge them as a parallel pair. But that's gonna to have to wait for uh, me to build another one of these ammeters. So for the moment, that's it. Cheerio.